Hello there everyone, my name is Chris and today we're going to be getting into a little bit of geekery when it comes to 3D printing, specifically with board games and tabletop gaming. That way it helps you actually visualize destroying a shield generator on an Imperial class Star Destroyer with your X-Wing miniature group, or defending the Imperium of Man from the heretical darkness, or delving into a dungeon, defeating a dragon, getting the treasure, and actually visualizing what is happening in this dungeon. That way you don't have to leap too much to the imagination. And to do that, we're gonna actually go over two different versions on how to get your world to come to life. Let's start with a user-created 3D printed route. I've specifically chosen the OpenForge tile system by Masterwork Tools because it really emulates the Dwarven Forge system that is really just too expensive for me and quite honestly, too expensive for a lot of people. So this route actually saves you quite a bit of money in the long run with just that initial purchase of a 3D printer. One of the big things I really appreciate about the OpenForge system is that they are open lock compatible, which means you can also 3D print these little locks that interconnect each of the boards. So that way they don't move around too much unless you really want them to. And if you need to move a wall or a different tile, you just snap it apart and snap a new one on. I decided to go with an ABS filament on these because the PLA that I used really didn't turn out too well and didn't look right. And I still wanted to keep my cost low so I didn't go with an Inova 1800 or a higher grade filament like that. Each tile is printed out in two to three parts. You have the base, the actual stonework, and then in some cases, if you need a wall or a door, that would also be printed out separately. I chose a black filament because it does look better after the first coat of paint goes on. That way it actually gives it more of a shadowy look and it could really help you really design a lot better and get a better idea of how you want your tile work to look after you're done painting. To assemble it, I used a Super T glue and then an accelerant to make sure that it actually stayed in nice and straight without moving around too much or jostling. So that way I have a nice even square to work with. And each of the tile stones are one inch in diameter, so that way it fits the D&D style a little bit more perfectly. Once I was done assembling the actual board, now it was time for painting. And to start painting it, I used just about two or three coats of gray layered on top of itself, and then threw in a little bit of brown for a little bit of color differentiation. Once I was done painting, I did mix a 50-50 solution of Elmer's glue and water to add on this extra moss into the cracks and crevices on the tile to give it that extra dankness of a dungeon. And as you can see on both of them, it worked out pretty nicely. I'm pretty excited with that. Once I was done, all I needed to do was spray a thin coat of polyurethane on it, and you have what you see here today. If you don't have a 3D printer, you prefer a more hands-on approach, or want to be able to customize details more easily, there's a variety of other options for making terrain for tabletop games as well. Here we've used expanded polystyrene, or XPS foam, to make dungeon tiles from your favorite fantasy role-playing game. XPS can be found at most major home improvement stores in the insulation section, in small project boards, or large sheets of various thicknesses. The foam can be easily cut with a nice sharp utility knife, or if you have one, a hot wire foam cutter. This tool passes current through a taut, thin gauge wire. The heat from the resistive load on the thin wire allows you to cut through this foam like warm butter. Just make sure to do this in a well-ventilated area because it is polystyrene and it is extremely flammable and it can produce some pretty nasty fumes. Once you've cut out your foam to shape, you can add details with a hobby knife, pencils, or anything else you want to make impressions. After that, you can use any paint you want in whatever color scheme you desire. If you plan on sealing your foam terrain with a rattle can varnish or similar, make sure to add a sealing layer at some point. Be sure to note that the accelerant in most spray varnishes can disintegrate XPS. We use some Mod Podge over the whole piece before laying down our paints to protect it. Since the XPS foam version is a little bit more hands-on and labor-intensive than the 3D printed version that we showed earlier, we laid out each step for you to show how we got to the final result. The first step is still in its pink polystyrene form after we've measured and cut it out and add a little bit of detail with a hobby knife. Second step is with our Mod Podge mixture of black paint. This is also the step where we glued on the walls to give it that extra dungeony look. Third step, we've added a dark gray base to give it a more stone-like appearance. For the fourth step, we've taken two coats of a dry brush light gray coat to help define the stonework a little bit better. With step five, we're almost done. We just applied a black wash to really seal in and help define the dungeon as best as possible. Once you're done with that, you can add in moss, rocks, stones, crackle, doesn't matter. It just helps you really sell the fantasy vibe of your dungeon. 
Each of these build types have their pros and cons as we explained earlier. It is important to note that I did use a Lulzbot Taz 6 3D printer and this took about eight hours for the build and the paint job, while this took about double the time, but I was able to add in a little bit more customizability. So if you want us to continue with this type of content or you want us to produce some tutorials on how to do all of this, leave a comment below and we'll be happy to get to it. See you next time. Because fumes. <laughs> how am I gonna start this? Panache to destroying a shield generator on an imperial. Hello there, everyone. No. I even slipped in panache. Specifically, you don't like that. I saw that face on you. <laughs> Got it. I know what I'm saying. Okay, cool. All right.